did you know? In 2015, Sony booted up their old PlayStation machinery to fulfill an unusual order. The art directors of the 2015 Marilyn Manson album, The Pale Emperor, wanted to use the PlayStation disc aesthetic for themselves. Their production manager at Concord Music sourced the CDs from Sony directly, and the album's discs were made from the same specs as the original PlayStation discs, the only difference being that Manson's discs were sprayed with a special film that turned white as the discs warmed up during playback. Earlier models of the PS1 were praised by audiophiles for their superior sound quality. PlayStation systems with an SCPH-1000 serial were popular among music fans as dedicated CD players, with some saying the system was on par with multi-thousand dollar CD players. The PlayStation brand has a strong association with music, and it even originates from a desire to improve audio quality in console gaming. Ken Kutaragi, the man dubbed the father of the PlayStation, became interested in developing for games when he saw his daughter playing the Nintendo Famicom. The Sony Sound Labs engineer felt the console's sound capabilities were lacking, and decided to build dedicated audio chips for consoles. Kutaragi developed the SPC-700 chip in secret while working for Sony, and was nearly fired upon its discovery. His job was saved by the intervention of Sony president Norio Oga, who supported the project. The SPC-700 went on to be used in the SNES, which had audio capabilities surpassing its competition. The audio chip built bridges between Nintendo and Sony, paving the way for more collaboration. Meanwhile, Sony and Philips had been co-developing the CD-ROM XA format, which allowed audio and visual data to be accessed simultaneously from a CD. Nintendo were curious about disc-based gaming, as CDs could hold far more data than cartridges. A deal was struck between the two companies, with Sony to develop a CD-ROM add-on for the Super Nintendo. The project initially went under the name Super Disc before being changed to PlayStation, a machine capable of playing both SNES cartridges and CD-ROMs. It was agreed that Sony would have exclusive worldwide rights to licensing of the CDs, but this made Nintendo uneasy. They felt the PlayStation project heavily favored Sony as they retained the licensing rights on the discs, meaning Nintendo wouldn't be able to demand any licensing fees from third-party games on CDs. This added to Nintendo's frustration of Sony retaining the rights to the Super Nintendo audio chip, which required expensive development tools that Sony had kept to themselves. Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi believed the deal spelled disaster for Nintendo. They were inviting Sony into the games industry, a company that could potentially become a powerful rival. Ironically, Yamauchi's attempts to avert this possibility actually fulfilled it. He sent Nintendo of America's Howard Lincoln and Minoru Arakawa to Europe to negotiate a new deal with Philips. Even though Sony and Philips had worked together on the CDXA format, internal tensions had forced the companies apart. So it was a humiliating betrayal when, the day after Sony publicly announced their partnership with Nintendo, Nintendo announced entirely different plans. Nintendo would instead be partnering with Philips to develop the SNES's CD peripheral. Ogo was furious at Nintendo for not only breaching their contract, but also working with a foreign company over a domestic one, breaking an unwritten rule in Japanese business. By this point, Sony had sunk a huge amount of time and resources into the console, and they seriously considered legal action. Instead, Nintendo filed an unsuccessful injunction claiming their own rights to the PlayStation name. Perhaps as a tactic to frustrate development of the PlayStation, they also proposed that Sony remain involved in the SNES CD project, but only in non-game areas. The two companies revised their arrangement and announced it the following year. Their CD drives would be compatible with one another and Nintendo would license the software produced for the PlayStation. Prototypes did not get very far with only around 200 produced. The SNES cartridge slot made the console tremendously unappealing at Sony, as most consoles are sold at a loss and Nintendo would be profiting from the software, not them. Additionally, many predicted that the cartridge format was dying. Many Sony employees resented and blamed Kuduragi for the messy situation, believing that Sony should not even be in the game's business. Kuduragi's faith in the PlayStation project was unshaken, though, as he believed the problem was with Nintendo. Sony ceased negotiations with Nintendo in May 1992. It was around this time that several Sony executives approached Sega of America, proposing a collaboration. They noted their mutual enemy in Nintendo, and offered to work together on a disc-based console. Discussions were going well until they came to the board of directors at Sega, where the idea was promptly shut down. President and CEO of Sega, Hayao Nakayama, felt that Sony was too inexperienced in the market to be a valuable ally. However, Sega would influence the PlayStation more indirectly. During the planning stages, Sony considered focusing on 2D games, as nobody at the company besides Kutaragi understood how 3D worked. 
It was when Sega's Virtual Fighter became a smash hit that they changed their minds. In June of 1992, Kudaragi attended a meeting with Sony executives to decide the future of the project. He revealed that he'd been working on a new console that used CD-ROMs and was capable of rendering 3D graphics. While Oga was skeptical of the project due to its high processing requirements, Kudaragi appealed to his pride, reminding him of Nintendo's humiliating betrayal. Convinced, Oga demanded that Sony remain in the games industry, and work on the PlayStation continued, this time as a standalone console with CD-ROM format and powerful 3D graphics. Much of Sony's senior staff saw Nintendo, Sega, and the console industry as toy manufacturers, and believed that working with them would irreparably damage Sony's image. This is also why Sony's logo didn't appear alongside the PlayStations for a long time. To ease the senior staff concerns, Kudaragi was moved to Sony Music, which was technically a different company. Sony Music helped launch the PlayStation as they knew how to attract talent, market the console, and produce and publish CDs. Sony unveiled the PlayStation in 1993 under the new brand PlayStation X, which birthed the PSX abbreviation still used to this day. The hardware was designed by Kudaragi, who was able to squeeze better performance out of an average processor using his VLSI chip. The console's speed and power came as a shock to the industry, with Nakayama demanding another processor be added to the Sega Saturn in response. This decision made the Saturn difficult to develop for, and was a contributing factor to the console's poor sales. Sony's immediate concern was software, and they immediately set about to gather third-party developers to their side. They were keen to gain the support of popular arcade developers like Namco, Konami, and Williams, so that they could compete with Sega's arcade-focused strategy. They also bought Lemmings publisher Cygnosis to be an in-house development team. Cygnosis were a key part of Sony's strategy, as they created a PS1 development system that would work on the average consumer PC, rather than requiring specialized and expensive hardware. Sega and Nintendo's licensing strategy at the time was restrictive, as it was expensive for third parties to get a license. Their proprietary cartridges also had to be procured directly from each company. It'd take 10 to 12 weeks to receive the cartridges, making it impossible for publishers to quickly respond to market demand. Sony had cheaper licensing fees and a large sales force dedicated to distributing the software. This generated a lot of goodwill and many companies began planning games for Sony's system before publishing agreements were even finalized. This included the likes of Squaresoft, who had a long history with Nintendo but were won over by the CD format. The PlayStation's lower price point allowed the console to comfortably compete with the more expensive Saturn, but this price made the PS1 sell at a loss due to the cost of memory. During Sony's infamous conference at E3 1995, they undercut the Sega Saturn's surprise $399 launch price in a humorous manner. Following a long-winded speech, Steve Race, president of Sony Computer Entertainment America, took the stage and simply uttered, $299. Kudaragi ended up removing expensive features from the PlayStation to reduce cost of subsequent models, such as S-Video. Many concepts were designed for the PlayStation logo, with three dozen being presented for final selection. Designer Manabu Sakamoto claimed that the four bright colors of the final logo represent brilliance, joy, passion, and excellence. Designer Taiyu Goto had always had an interest in computer games and was brought onto the PlayStation project in 1993. Sony didn't have any prior experience in the market, so he was given complete freedom with the PlayStation's design. Goto recalled the process being fairly easy, and he designed the box with a sleek, modern look to challenge the perception of game consoles as toys for children. The controller proved a lot more difficult, however. Management wanted to mimic the SNES pad so that it would be familiar to gamers. The extra shoulder buttons were added to make it easier to navigate in 3D space. This ended up making the pad unstable, as the player's middle fingers would no longer be supporting it. So grips were added to compensate. Sony executives were not happy with this design, and instructed Goto to revisit the flatter controller. When Goto presented his work to the higher-ups again, Ogle was allegedly furious, demanding that the grips return. Sony chose to assign symbols rather than letters to the buttons to make them easy to remember. Goto came up with the iconic triangle, circle, cross, and square combination soon after. Each symbol was given a color and a universal function. Triangle represented the player's viewpoint, square represented a menu or map, and circle and X represented yes and no, respectively. Circles are used in Japan to mean yes or correct, similar to a tick in Europe and America. This has caused some localization issues with the function of Circle and X having to be swapped between Japanese and worldwide releases. Sony released a dual analog controller in 1997 as an experiment to give players better control over their character and the camera. It was discontinued in favor of the DualShock. 
which also boasted twin rumble motors and comfier analog sticks. The PlayStation's You Are Not Ready campaign was designed to challenge gamers. Sony reasoned that gamers were competitive and they'd want to rise to the challenge of being told that they weren't prepared. Hidden codes and messages were also included in the commercials to encourage discussion and speculation among gamers. For example, the phrase ENOS lives was a coded message teasing the console's eventual release, with NOS meaning 9th of September. Sony would go on to produce several different revisions of the PlayStation console, from a slimmer and sleeker redesign to a version with an external power supply. There was also an addition unique to Hong Kong that included the ability to play video CDs. Did you also know that you could win a PlayStation Classic and a PlayStation 4 Pro by checking out the video on screen? But if you want more PlayStation facts, you can check out our new video on the Spire of the Dragon games.